Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It is Tuesday night and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, I saw my camera glitch there, so hopefully it's not gonna glitch uh, throughout this uh, broadcast. Also, it's been storming all day, so hopefully we're not gonna lose the internet, we're not gonna lose power and everything. This is gonna be great, this is gonna be awesome. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna draw some pictures and we're gonna have a good time, we're gonna chat and no technical difficulties are gonna happen at all. Um, Okay, Larry's in the room already. He says, I got dibs for bottom. Um, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> uh, but uh, so what are we working on tonight? Uh, we are drawing a dog in um, uh, white pencil on black paper. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to draw it, but I haven't done one in a while. So I thought I'd revisit that. Um, it's, uh, it's a really cool technique. Uh, the pictures usually come out looking really striking. So hopefully this one will as well. Uh, if you're wondering what kind of dog we're drawing, uh, I believe it's a Basset Hound. Um, so I'm just going to jump in and get right to it. A uh, couple people in the chat already. Let's see. Uh, I don't know what Larry's talking about. He says, uh, I got dibs for bottom or top. Uh, not sure what he's talking about, but that's okay. Uh, we got hater in the house. Nice. Um, I do have an update on my friend, um, Olivia. Uh, she's doing much better. She's, uh, recovering from, um, her radiation treatment. So, uh, she should be good to go here shortly. Um, I talked to her today and uh, I believe there's uh, there's a reason they can't do any testing until like August, but uh, in August, uh, it, she should probably get like a clean bill of health. She's already recovered from like all of her radiation therapy and everything like that. So good to go. So that's good news for today. Anyway, so I'm just jumping right in. As you can see, I, I already kind of sketched out a little bit beforehand, uh, you know, where I thought this dog might look on this paper just because like sometimes um i'm a little pressed for time so i wanted to make sure that i was good to go here uh i'm gonna start off by just putting in like really light marks and then coming back and kind of like reinforcing some of the uh the really bright areas but just to let you guys know um oh uh, sorry there's a couple more people in the room i should shout out to uh kids in the room we got uh cabins in the room we got mama q oh we got a party in here we got tom it's awesome. All the um, all the regular dog lovers. Yeah, I, like whenever I um, I draw dog pictures, certain people show up, and then when I draw other things, they all disappear on me. <laughs> but that's cool, though. Yeah, I think this is this one's gonna look uh, really nice, nice little basset hound. So, how's everybody been? Um, we had a Easter these uh, in the last couple of days. Hopefully, people had a good time. Um, hopefully you guys found a bunch of eggs or like you didn't lose any eggs at least like if, if they're like not plastic eggs they could start stinking after a while I've had that problem in the past but, I love this guy already this is going to turn out great so um, the, you know like I, I've done a lot of these in the past but for anybody who's new um, you just basically start drawing really thin layers of white on the black paper and then as you uh continue along you kind of build up the uh, layers and stuff and uh you're basically drawing with light instead of shadows like if you were drawing in pen like regular graphite pencils and stuff you would be drawing all the dark areas this is like the exact inverse you're drawing all the uh, light areas so just keeping it pretty light until i'm i'm certain of where everything is and then i'll start to uh kind of reinforce some of these things but that's that's kind of how it goes yeah so i appreciate uh, i appreciate the um you guys uh tracking her progress all this time uh i i realized it's been a while since i gave an update so i wanted to check in with her today and just kind of see how she was doing uh so that i could give you guys an update but she's doing really good um she uh that radiation uh therapy like man it like tore her up like it, oh, it was just nasty she showed some pictures of um of uh all the damage that does like look like i don't know second degree burns um like blisters and stuff like that. it was just terrible so i do not envy that of anybody who's going through that but um and then she had some uh she had some like therapy where she had to work out her like joints or something i don't know uh just from like having to hold her arms up during the um the radiation i don't know she was trying to describe it as like i i don't know all the details and stuff so Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys aren't going to quiz me. 
Man, I hate that. I hate when that happens. It's so irritating because these things aren't cheap. <laughs> uh, the good th thing about working with these Prismacolor uh, pencils is uh, if you go to like an art store, they usually have like individual ones. So like if you're missing a white or something like that, you can uh, you can buy just a white without buying the whole set. Uh, I forget what my entire set costs. I, it's been a long time since I bought uh, any colored pencils, but I think I am due for a, a new white one pretty soon. I might go out and get one of those this weekend. But yeah, we had um, we had Easter. I don't know how many of you people live. You people, sorry. <laughs> how many of you folks uh, live in the um, in the belt for that eclipse? But that's coming up soon. That's coming up uh, next Monday. It's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm actually going to drive, so it, it's not exactly overhead here. Um, I have to drive out a little bit to uh, to see the full totality of it, but it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. The last one they had that was uh, kind of partial um, in this area, it was, it was really cool. That's right, Mama Q. Yeah, you moved your, um, you moved your little one. Oh, the radiator cracked in your truck. Oh, that sucks. Ugh. I hate that. How old was the truck? Like, was it, um, was it an older one? If it was new, that, that really sucks. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever drawn a Basset Hound. Does anybody out there have a Basset Hound? These are so adorable. They look perpetually sad for some reason. But I would love to have a Basset Hound. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to call this guy. I'm gonna call him Fred. Fred the Basset Hound. Oh, you just got a Basset uh, puppy. Oh, how cute. Neat. Oh, your mom went through uh, both radiation, yeah, and chemo. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it is not fun. It is probably like some of the worst stuff that people have to go through. But you know, I mean, she's a fighter. Like she's got a lot more strength in her than I probably would. Like I don't know if if I ever end up, you know, getting sick like that. I I don't think I'd hold up the way that she is. Some people are just like born fighters, you know. But she she's always been that way anyway. Like she she's always had a lot of determination. Uh, I I mentioned before that we were like coworkers and stuff like that. She was always way more dedicated to her job than I was. I was, I mean, I wasn't a slacker, but I kind of like, um, I don't know. I I wasn't as driven maybe as uh she was. So I would definitely count her as a, like a fighter, not just with this, but just in general, like she's always going to do well in life. Some people are just like that, you know, some people, I don't know. They, they need a bit of like, like arm twisting, uh, to, uh, get ahead in life. It doesn't come natural to them. Like, I feel like she's always, uh, going to just do well. So just keeping the uh, the marks really light, kind of getting some of these lighter areas in. Again, I'm not really sure where everything is at this point, so I want to keep it kind of light and then just create some uh, just create some mass, I guess. Um, kind of figure out where where this uh, doggo's forehead is catching the light, and then come back and reinforce some of those the finer hairs a little bit later on. So I think the light would be kind of coming down here. Now this area through here, this would all be white because these basset hounds, they have these like little streaks. These guys are adorable. I wish I had a dog for every, I, I wish I had every single dog I've drawn because they're so cute. Like I would, I would have like an army of dogs if I could. 
I don't know how I would take care of them all, but I would love to. Especially ones that look like this. Like, just so soulful, you know? Like, these, uh, these type of dogs, they have those kind of eyes that just kind of stare into your soul. I mean, most dogs do, but... Puppy dog eyes. I mean, they call it puppy dog eyes for a reason, right? The funny thing about it is no matter how many of these, like, older dogs I draw, they still look like puppies. I don't know if that's like me or if that's just how they look. I don't know. Hey, Rome dog. Um, okay, Larry says a, uh, a good friend from high school had a basset. His name was Seamus, uh, pronounced Seamus. <laughs> I know how to pronounce Seamus. Um, uh, he said it was the laziest dog. Yeah, I felt like these are the type of dogs. I don't know. Maybe it's just like how they're portrayed in Hollywood, but these are the type of dogs that like sit on the front, um, porch and like block the door. You have to kind of like slide them out of the way. Like all they do is sleep all day, but they're supposed to be like hunting dogs, aren't they? Like these guys are supposed to be able to sniff out things. Maybe that's what they do when they're young and then they kind of like just retire or something. Uh, Hater says, I reckon upon uh, completion of chemotherapy and radiation treatments, uh, Olivia will require therapy to address the mental stress associated with her battle against cancer. I mean, maybe, but I, she's got, she's got a pretty good mental, um, like I said, she's, she's pretty strong, right? So she's not just strong physically. She's a, She's got the head for uh, this type of stuff. So I don't know. Everybody's different. Not everybody tells you like what they're struggling with. If she does need help, I hope she gets it. Um, but I'm sure she will. You know, like her husband is uh, is on top of things. So like whatever she needs, she'll make sure that um, he'll make sure that she gets it. Uh, she's not in this alone. She's got she's got a team of people. So. Whatever she needs, I'm sure she'll get it. But I mean, it's just it's just nice to see like a light at the end of the tunnel. Tunnel. I mean, August is still pretty far off, but I think that it'll be here before too long. And um, and she's been sick basically for almost an entire year. I remember this time last year, I think. She was doing art shows. So, I don't know. It'd be nice to wear a different shirt. <laughs> like, I, I, I've I grown accustomed to wearing this shirt, but I, I'm only wearing it until she gets better, which means I never want to wear this shirt again. I want, I just rather her be better. Put this shirt away. Should get a uniform though, like Jeremy does art, um, or Jeremy made art. Uh, shirt. That'd be funny. A big Bob Ross picture on it. I don't know what I'll wear, but it'll be something different, and that's good. An army of dogs would be awesome. You gave both your doggos baths today? Oh, my dogs definitely need a bath. It, it was uh, thundering and lightning today, though, so, like, I couldn't, I couldn't give him a bath today. It was supposed to be, like, it was supposed to be a storm all day. In fact, it's supposed to be storming now, but I think it kind of lit up. Um, you know, talking about that uh, eclipse next week, um, it's a little tough because I'm driving to go, I'm driving, like, two hours just to go and be in the path of uh, totality um, so that I get to see, like, the full effect and everything. But I'm not 100% sure yet where I'm going because depending on the weather, you know, I may be driving to Indiana or I may be driving to Ohio and I don't know which. Um, or it may just be bad weather everywhere and then I'm not going anywhere. I felt sorry for some of the people who really did plan in advance and like, you know, they ended up getting like bed and breakfast um, someplace um, or they're traveling like by plane or something like really far to go and see this thing. Um, what if the weather's bad? You know, what if it's like overcast or something? You're not going to be able to see anything. Come back. Sorry for those folks. So 
I've been playing it by ear because like of the weather, um, kind of doing like almost like a storm chasing type deal. Whereas like, I won't know until the day of where I'm going, but I'm committed to this. I think it's going to be great. I'll, uh, I'll take a bunch of pictures and share it with you guys. I should uh, draw a picture of an eclipse, which is just like basically a black circle with like white around it. That'll be my excuse to uh, to put it on this channel. I only want art stuff on this channel. Like, I don't want to bother you guys with, like, just day-to-day -day stuff. So, if I'm going to go have some fun with an eclipse, I have to make it art-related. But I don't think that's too hard. Like, you can find art and everything. What time of day is your eclipse viewing? I think it's around 1 o'clock. Don't quote me on that, though. I'd have to relook it up, but... I think it's about midday. Like I know that some people it's like super early in the morning for them and stuff. And then some people it's in the evening. I think ours is just like right there in the middle. Um, I'm basically going out near Indianapolis. That's, that's what I have in mind. So like whatever it is out there, like you can look it up, uh, like the path, um, the path the eclipse is taking. I think I'm going out to Indianapolis basically. But then if the weather's bad in Indianapolis, I'm, I'm probably going to go up to Dayton, Ohio, um, which, you know, the air base up there is doing like a lot of cool stuff for it. Um, that might be fun anyway, just because they have the, uh, the Na National Air Museum there, I think it's called. Um, but they have like a lot of like all those planes that Forrest Finn flew. They have all of those up there. They have the uh, the F. 100s the um t33 whatever they are called like all of those things they even have the jelly green giant but i might go up there just to see the air museum that'd be cool um i'm sure cabin has been there like if he's still in the room he's, he's a big aviation buff so we're getting a furry face in still not completely committed to any of these like markings and stuff yet might move some things around definitely going to brighten some areas up like what's really cool about these pictures is um you know you are basically drawing the light right so like this dog's ha has some white in his face anyway so you're you're definitely drawing that but also you're drawing where the light hits the uh face like if you were drawing a black lab It'd be perfect because you're really just drawing where the um the light is reflecting off the black it's a little bit different with this dog but kind of similar concepts like a lot of this will be white through here but yeah. oh three-ish yeah maybe hmm. hey mj yeah, so like here, the weather is supposed to be cloudy. Now, we're still like a week away, so who who really knows what the weather is going to be like. But I think that, um, I mean, I am willing to travel. Like there was one time, <laughs> there was one time the um, Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, was supposed to have been like as far down as Ohio. It, it didn't really get that far down, but it was supposed to be that far down. And um I went traveling, like, I went looking for the Aurora Borealis, so I just went driving in that general direction, and I drove, like, five hours, like, all night. Like, I think I started maybe at 11 and ended up, like, super early in the morning looking for those northern lights, and uh, they never did come down far enough, but I went looking. Um, so I am dedicated to these, like, sort of, like, weird natural events to where if... If I have to travel 10 hours just to go and find some place that isn't overcast, I will do it. I will see my eclipse. Because the next one's not until like 2045, you know? This is this is like, I don't know, maybe the last chance I get. I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> I mean, hopefully I'll live to, to 2045, but you never can tell. And then you have to go drive, travel all the way out to like, I think, I don't know, like Wyoming or something to see it. So that 2045 one's going to be sort of inconvenient. Q 
you little puppy. Hey, curly hair. Hey, curly hair cartel. Uh, Trace, Tracy's in the house. Cool. I recognize that name. How you doing? That's a friend of mine from high school. I haven't seen her in, uh, in, in real life in a while. It's pretty cool. Got a party going on tonight. I guess you guys must really like Basset Hounds. Yeah, I, I definitely like this style of art, like drawing um, on black paper. I haven't done it in a while. Like, I, I think I've only done one of these uh, this year. And um, it, it's it's kind of like, it's a shame because, like, I really do like the style. And I, I think that uh, the pictures I do in it really come out looking nice. Like, I would prefer to draw in white pencil on black paper over, like, drawing in, like, graphite or, or something like that. Yes, very good friend, uh, Curly Hair Cartel. Yeah, um, dang, it's been like, I don't know. It's been a while since we graduated from high school, so like I would say very good friends to stay in touch all these years. Um, but fun fact, like I actually met you in, in uh, art class. I'm trying to remember her name. I don't remember Mrs. Something Another, um, but yeah, it, we actually met in uh, art class way back in the day, <laughs> way back in the day. <laughs> That's like the only art schooling I've ever gotten is like that high school art class. And I'm trying to remember some of the projects we worked on. There was this, um, I don't know, there was like this art appreciation project where we were supposed to take like famous artworks and turn them into chairs of some sort. So like there would be like a Van Gogh chair, like Starry Night type chair. I forget wh what artist I was supposed to work on, but it was, it was it was a dumb project like that. And then I remember there was, um, oh, Bruns, yeah, it's Mrs. Bruns. Oh man, dang, see, this is why you have all, like, this is why you keep friends around so that you can, you don't have to remember these things, they, they'll remember for you. Mrs. Bruns, I remember that, nice. I think one of the uh, projects that we had in um, in art class was we had to do a um, like a self portrait, uh, but we could only use fingerprints. So like they brought in like these um, these ink pads and stuff, and we had to like basically make a self portrait, or maybe it wasn't a self portrait. I just made a self portrait because I'm narcissistic or something. I don't know, but uh, I remember having to do like a self portrait using fingerprints. Well, yeah, that was kind of cool. Like, if you're going to do a self-portrait, might as well do it in fingerprints because, like, what's more personal than that? I thought it was a cool idea. I'm trying to think of some of the other projects. There was uh, there's some screen printing projects. I think, I think maybe we made T-shirts. I don't know. We didn't make T-shirts. It was some other, like, posters or something like that. But... Yeah, that was one of the few classes that I actually cared to show up to. <laughs> like most of, like most of my other classes, I, I I just could not get into at all. But yeah, I mean, I was um I was taking graphic arts in the vocational school, so like I got like some creativity there, uh, as well, like the art classes and stuff. I think they were pretty low key. I'm I'm trying to think if there were any like major projects we worked on. And I don't think so. I'm trying to think, there was probably other people who were better in that class than me. Like for all, I don't remember what all you did, Tracy, but I'm I'm sure your stuff was probably better than mine back then. Little scruffy lad. I just want to scratch his face. That's cute. So th this is a pretty good start, I think. Um, you know, some of these areas are going to be much brighter, but got to gotta build up to it, you know. It's a process. Oh, Davio slipped in. Sorry. Hey, hey Davio. Meow Wolf. I would love to go to Meow Wolf in, uh, in Santa Fe. That would be awesome. I had the opportunity, but I missed it when I was traveling. 
it's preoccupied. But that's one of those cool places that everybody should see. But like, I don't know, like if, I think I might have mentioned this before, but if, if you guys have the opportunity to go see the eclipse in totality, you know, that's really where it's at. Um, my understanding is that like, you don't want, you don't want to just do like that whole 99% or whatever. It's not the same. Um, apparently like when it's full totality, uh, you, you get like a 360 degree, um, oh, that the weather's starting up by the way. So like, if you, if I end up losing my internet connection, it's because Kentucky sucks. And anytime there's like a slight breeze or something, we lose our internet. So hopefully things will hold up, but if not, sorry guys, pretty bad storm. But anyway, yeah. So like, um, my understanding is that you definitely want to um, experience the full totality if you can, just because it's like a unique thing that you you won't be able to experience otherwise. That's my understanding. That's what I'm shooting for. Plus, I, I think it's kind of fun, you know, like the whole family's going out. Uh, Got this, got this cool specs, you know, like the uh, welder glasses, essentially. And then I got my own little um, telescope contraption that we're going to use to uh, try to capture this event. The one, I, I think the last one was like 2017 or something. This one's going to be cooler than that one. And that one was fun, too. Like, it was just so cool that, like, middle of the day, you start hearing the uh, crickets chirp or... Or whatever. Just like clockwork. I am an all or nothing type guy. Exactly. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's the stock phrase of mine. Get some wider areas in here. Yeah, I mean, you know. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I'll, I'll half-ass things, but, like, if I care about things, I, I'm, I'm all in. And I care about this eclipse. I'm all in on this thing. Because, I mean, it's just kind of cool, you know? Like, how, how often do you get to uh, do these things? Well, I can tell you, you're not going to be able to do it again unless you travel to some other country until, like, 2045. You may not even be around then. Who knows? really bright reflection there i love reflections in eyes because it just kind of i mean it does all my work for me right i'm trying to create a realistic looking dog here i put these reflections in and it just like automatically looks real i don't even have to do much usually i use like a gel pen for that but this this seems to be working well Yeah, I think I'm going to call this guy Fred. There's, um, oh, who sings that song? Uh, Ray Stevens. Like, I, I don't listen to, like, a lot of country music, but uh, Ray Stevens, I remember growing up to. Uh, my parents used to listen to that all the time. He had a, uh, I think it was Ray Stevens. He had a song called uh, Fred, You Were a Good Dog. It's a great song. You should just stop watching my channel. Go go uh, YouTube um, uh, Fred. Fred the Dog by Ray Stevens. I mean, you can wait until after this, but I'm not going to try to sing it. I really want to try to sing it. <laughs> Fred, you were a good dog. Anyway, it's all about how like his dog um, started drinking, started hanging out with the wrong people, getting into fights. Fred used to, like, cook and clean around the house. Now he won't do that anymore. It's such a great song. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the eyes are always the best. Thanks, kid. Oh, you're nothing but a hound dog. There you go. That's a good one. 
Oh man, there's like a whole soundtrack for to this uh this drawing. Um okay, Larry says I'll be watching the eclipse from Florida. I don't have to be under the black hole sun. Florida sounds nice. This time of year, definitely. Uh, Kevin says, uh, seeing totality isn't necessarily life changing, but you're certainly different after having experienced it. It is going to be life changing, Kevin. It's going to, I'm going to make it life changing. It's going to be so awesome. I mean, I've seen, I've seen the video. So like, I know what to expect. I mean, I, I agree. It's not, it's not the biggest thing in the world or whatever, but it is kind of cool. You know, like, I mean, for, first off it's free, it's free entertainment. Um, second off. It's like this cool natural wonder, you know, like, and you, you live your life and, and sometimes you forget how like awesome life actually is, you know, because like, I don't know, it can get, it can get kind of mundane and boring and, and, um, you know, your day to day, like one day bleeding into the next, not that much difference or whatever. And then like, suddenly you get this eclipse, like blocking the sun for four minutes, I mean, that kind of stuff, like, it's a big deal, you know? It's, it's a big deal, and people should think of it as a big deal. Like, you're basic, like the cosmos, the entire cosmos is lining up to create this, like, spectacular visual event for you. Like, how awesome is that, right? The, the sun and the moon are doing a little dance, and you get to watch it for free well you know gas you have to put gas in there maybe maybe snacks probably snacks yeah i mean it's basically a road trip all right so almost free <laughs> it's going to be great it's going to be awesome it, it is life-changing it's life-changing sorry i shouldn't be banging on this thing while i'm trying to draw it's powerful for certain it absolutely is powerful I mean, it was, it was a big deal last time. And that was, um, I, I think I looked it up and I, I think that was like a 96% eclipse or something. And like, I didn't travel for that one. That one, I just went out in the backyard and stuff and kind of looked up in the sky and, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. I had never done like the whole eclipse thing before. And I was kind of like, I thought that was awesome. You know, just, just the fact that like the birds, uh, kind of started acting weird and the insects came out and. It was basically like evening in the middle of the day and and then everything went back to normal it's like five minutes later or whatever or, you know i don't know how long it was but i'm, I'm gonna say five minutes <laughs> i mean that by itself was cool you know so i'm all in yeah this totally clip thing i gotta i gotta do it and i encourage you guys to do it too yeah you know, I got, I got this YouTube show here. Like, I'm supposed to be like an influencer. I'm going to influence you guys to go and watch the eclipse. There you go. You have been influenced. <laughs> I don't know how to be an influencer. Whoa, Jeremy just described my only tattoo. I don't know. How, like, like, what did I say that describes your tattoo? Now I'm super curious. What, what kind of tattoo you got? I hope it's of an eclipse. It's just a fun word to say. It, it, eclipse. I, I don't even know. Is it eclipse? Is it eclipse? It's one of those words that like you don't say enough to know how it's pronounced. It's like when you're looking up um, uh, like foreign words or something like that. You you can see how they're spelled and you can kind of try to guess how they're pronounced, but you really have to hear the pronunciation in order to. Uh, really get it this guy's got like a little sniffer got like a little sniffer schnauzer it's got a nose man that's his bronze class that was a blast from the past Thanks, Larry. 
yeah, I think Fred looks awesome too. I I think this is a is a fun picture. Um, you know, I I wanted to do one of these pictures for a while, and um, I still got I still have some pictures I have to finish up. Like I have to uh, get that raccoon finished up. I don't know why I didn't finish that, and then I've got to get Larry's uh, dogs finished up. Um, I just wanted like a nice little uh, palette cleanser tonight, and uh, I always like doing these pictures. They're so much fun and um, relaxing. It's really relaxing to draw in white pencil. But um, I, I'm I'm always tempted to do like the the black lab, you know, like in this style, or um, you know, some sort of black dog. Uh, but I I definitely wanted to do something that wasn't that. So I uh I kind of thought about it for a little bit and I'm like, you know, I've never done one of these basset hounds and they're so cute. They're like perfect to draw. Cuz they've got that soulful expression. If you can capture that expression, again, you've done your job, you know. Looks like a nose to me. Come back and uh, tinker with that a little bit more later. I want to make sure that I get all of this fur in here. Like, there's some areas that are whiter than others. I want to make sure that those all get super white. It's all about that value comparison. So, like, you want to make sure that the super white areas are super white. And then, so that, you know, they kind of stand out from some of these other areas that are kind of, like, basically filler areas. Hey, Treasure Warriors! You're choosing me over sports? What? What what sports are going on tonight? Hey, did you see that bracket? I I, I don't know how, but like I, I'm number one so far. Until, you know, like <laughs> until the last team's play and then my bracket goes dead. But somehow I have managed to pick the right team ish teams. <laughs> I don't know, that's pure luck. I don't even remember how I picked those uh teams, but uh, my bracket actually isn't doing as bad as I thought it would be. What what games are going on tonight? Um, so like all, all the talk that people have been doing about opening day and stuff with the um, uh, baseball and stuff, I'm actually inspired. I'm I'm gonna go to like uh, I'm gonna go to a baseball game this year. I usually don't like I. I don't remember the last time I went to a baseball game, but I remember, you know, I, I do enjoy baseball. Like of all the different sports, um, baseball is probably one of my favorite. And, you know, like I, I get that like a lot of people maybe have outgrown baseball. They think it's kind of boring, things like that. But for me, it's always been like, I don't know. It's one of those things that you have to go and see in person. Um, like I'm not a big sports person, but I love live sports. I love going to uh, to games where you actually show up in person and you get like the hot dog and you know you're there with other people and you're cheering and stuff like that. It's a big social thing. I I enjoy that, and I I got a basic understanding of what's going on on the field. Like I'm I am not a huge like sports person, but um, I I know enough to get by. Like, I, I downplay how much I know about sports, you know, because I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm not supposed to like sports, but I do. I, I, I like live sports. I like live sports. I like live music. I like live anything. Any excuse to get together with people. I love crowds. Um, I love hanging out with uh, large groups of people. I don't, I don't like so much small groups of people just because, like, I don't know, social anxiety or whatever, but big groups of people. I like that. Big groups where you can just kind of, like, disappear into the background. I like that. I love this guy's face. Oh, it's so cute. Makes me want to grow out, like, a mustache and a beard just to match and look like this guy. That'd be cool. Little basset hound. So I feel like my dog, Guinness, actually has a little bit of hound dog in him. Because he's he's got basically, like if he didn't have the long ears, this could pass as my dog. 
Anyway, um, yeah, so like a, a baseball game. That's in my cards this year. I'm going to go to a baseball game. I'm going to take myself out to the ballpark. Buy some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Is that how the song goes? I'm going to get a hot dog. That's what I'm going to get. Just the idea of going to a ball game and eating a hot dog. That just sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, yeah. Uh, I could go up to a Rens game. That'd be cool. That's a puppy named him Tucker. <laughs> Tucker. That's a great name for a bass it down, honestly. I, I mean, I get the joke, but that, that would be a uh, a great name for a hound dog, Tucker. Baseball food is the best. See, that's what I'm talking about, Tom. Baseball food and, um, you know, like street fairs, you know, like, I don't know, stuff that's like, I don't, I don't eat a lot of fried food. I can't really do it and like mess up my stomach or whatever, but I will make an exception for like something like a ball game or something. So, like, little layers and stuff of fur. So, you can see how this one little ridge here and stuff, it just creates this depth of, like, fur. Like, because there's, like, a lot of fur in this face. So, it's like, you got to create these, these like, layers of um, form so that you kind of see what's going on. I, I think that kind of stuff, like, really sells the eye or it makes it more convincing. I don't shoot for like ultra realistic or whatever, but I, I shoot for like convincing reality. So like, as long as this is a convincing drawing, uh, I feel like I've I've done enough. I like this ridge going. I like creating this shape here of. That's cute. All right, cool. Sorry, I get distracted. <laughs> like, what were we talking about? Mommy Q sent me a Shiloh item. What? I gotta, I forgot to send, I am so far behind on things I have to send out. I have to send uh, Mommy Q her Harry Potter picture, which is sitting there ready to go. I even have it packaged up. I just haven't sent it yet because I haven't been to the post office. I've been super busy working um, on uh, coding projects. Like I forget what day it is most of the time. Um, I basically sat down at my computer on Friday working on a project and I have literally been sitting at my computer since. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not by much. That is how much I have been working on this project. And I feel like this project is never going to end, but I'm dedicated. Like I said, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So gotta, gotta do the job. But anyway, yeah, so I haven't made it to the post office yet, but basically the, the what I was trying to get at is uh, I haven't made it to the post office yet. I barely made it to like the store to buy food. That's how like stuck in my chair I've been. But I'm, I'm coming up for air, you know. I, I think things are getting a little bit better. Things are not really winding down, but at least becoming manageable. Made fair food tonight. Fair food. That that's what I was getting at. Yeah, fair food's the best. Um, sausage and peppers, Italian. You guys making me burp up my uh my sandwich I had earlier. I just love how no matter <laughs> like it doesn't matter what I'm drawing, doesn't matter who's in the room. Uh, doesn't none of these things matter on on a long enough stream. Eventually, we start talking about food. Like every single time, somebody's going to bring up food. You guys are going to, I don't know if it's like dinner time, wherever you guys are or something like that, but it seems like every single time, um, I, I do one of these streams, somebody brings up food and we start talking about food and I just get so hungry. I should, I should draw food. I, I should, um, should draw like a hamburger and hot dog. Good old fashioned. All right. So th this year. This here kind of flops out here. 
So I definitely want to do these kind of light because I don't know how much detail I want to put into these ears at this point. I kind of want the face to stand out. Sorry, my nose leaks a lot during the springtime. So I I want to hint at the ear or like let you know what space the ear occupied. But I don't know how much detail I really want to put into it at this point. Just kind of softly put that in there. Cute little bass at home. All right, so that's enough for there. I want to kind of move over here and so underneath his chin is a lot of white area. Kind of just sketch that in for now. On the end of his nose. So even even here, I'm I'm using different pieces. Like I talk about this stuff all the time. I'm using different pieces that I've already drawn to kind of figure out where other things are. So like the edge of his nose, it kind of comes down. And then this is, I don't know what they call these things, like a waddle or whatever. Um, just like neck flaps. <laughs> I feel like it's okay to call these things neck flaps if it's a dog. Uh, but if it was like a human, you wouldn't call these things neck flaps. Neck neck flaps i i don't even know what the proper term is but anyway got got this stuff down here whatever it's called and then you've got another one that kind of lines up over here and then there's kind of like a dark area in between them these kind of come together a little bit here yeah and then this one's a little bit dark underneath here but then it gets a little bit brighter through here. So let me kind of remind myself of that. And then you get into kind of lined up here. The ear kind of comes around here. So this part is ear. And I kind of want to leave some of this in the shadow, but I want to know, I want to know that the ear stops here. And this is neck. There you go. All right. So I know it looks like a mess, but we'll figure that stuff out. Jowl, jowl, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, MJ. Thanks, Hater. Mmm, chili con carne and roasted spud. Uh, now, Hater is always cooking whenever we're doing these broadcasts. And he's got the most interesting, cool food. Like... I don't know. Like, I feel like if I was watching a YouTube channel of some dude drawing or something, I might be eating, like, potato chips or whatever. But, like, he's got full-on, like, meals that I would go to a restaurant for. That that stuff sounds amazing. Like, some of you guys have mentioned some pretty decent food in here, but if I had a choice of who I wanted to hang out with, to eat with, it would definitely be Hater. He's got, he's got my style of taste on food. So I'm going to get, I'm going to put in like a, kind of a, like a little bit of a white line through here. It's kind of catching the light. And this kind of lets me know the ear stops here. And then there's a ridge. Kind of comes down through here. Sometimes I forget where these different pieces are and stuff, but this, this is his ear. Or it could be her ear. No, we, we said it's Fred, so that's definitely a dude. It's a dude dog. Some of the dogs I draw, they, that obviously girls. This one is obviously a dude. A dude dog. I don't know what a dude dog is. I think half the reason why you guys tune in is, is to see what kind of made up stupid word I, I, I'm going to invent this week. Because, like, a lot of times I, I'm just sitting here. I, of course, I'm drinking while I'm drawing, right? So, like, I'm not. 
I'm not in my, uh, I'm not at my best to begin with, right? Conversation wise. Um, and then I kind of forget what words are and uh, certainly what words mean. Um, and I, I forget what word I'm looking for, like jowl, for example. Uh, I don't, I know what a jowl is. I'm not, I've got a pretty good vocabulary actually, but these things escape me while I'm on here drawing, talking to you guys. So like, I come up with neck folds. <laughs> so I know what a jowl is. That's what I mean to say, but and it comes out as neck folds. So I think that a lot of times you guys just tune in just to see what kind of crazy nonsense I'm going to uh, come up with. From that aspect, you're welcome. Happy to entertain you. Okay, so that's pretty cool here. You can see the uh, the uh, flops. Now, this looks an awful lot like this over here, so I have to like kind of make some distinction. So I, I want this to kind of come down and look more like fur in a neck. The jowls of the dog. And even though this is white, kind of goes down into his belly area and stuff like that, I, I don't want to draw all of that, so I, I just have to naturally cut it off at some point. I think we got a lot accomplished in the first hour. This is cool. And then this bit here, kind of fluff that in. I don't think that's a technical term. Fluff that in. I mean, it's fur though, right? It's, it's fluffing. I like Fred. Fred's awesome. MJ, I agree with you. I am cool. Thank you. You're cool too. I think I, most of the people in here are cool. Like I, I'm trying to think. And, I mean, except for Kevin. Kevin. Kevin's not cool, but everybody else is. <laughs> I'm just messing with Kevin. I'm only messing with Kevin because I know him in real life. Harry Potter's birthday. Oh, you guys share Harry Potter's birthday? That's awesome. Hey, uh, I appreciate you stopping in, Curly Hair Cartel. Um, hey, if you guys want to see some people who, um, I, I think that's what you have on your channel, definitely on uh, her TikTok channel. Um, Tracy is uh, one half of an awesome team that does uh, kind of like a Storage Wars type thing. They buy up a storage um, locker and they uh, get to find out what mysterious, uh, mysteriousness, mis yeah, what kind of secret items are in that storage locker? And, um, you know, like, it's very entertaining. Um, but that's what they do. Uh, they, they're, the Curly Hair Cartel is um, kind of like um, a group of people who sell, like, antiques and found objects and stuff like that. Definitely check out their channel. I think you can find it at Curly Hair Cartel. Just, like, search for Curly, uh, Curly Hair Cartel. And if you don't find them here, they're on TikTok uh, for certain. But anyway, friend of mine, we go way back. She's awesome. Make sure you check out her channel. Her and her uh, husband does the uh, whole storage wars thing, which is which is really cool. Like I I, I um I've been fascinated by some of the stuff that they've dug up in these uh in these storage lockers because you never know like what you're gonna get when you uh when you bid on these things. Like you can I, my understanding is that you can kind of peek into them, but you don't really get like a full inventory or something. So you might be buying like somebody's garbage or you might be buying, you know, priceless paintings or, or something like that. You know, you have no idea. So anyway, that's what she does. It's awesome. Encourage you guys to check that out. And if I had known that she was going to be in here, I probably would have came out and come up with a better pitch than what I did, but or a better plug or, or whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm not I'm not very good at the whole um YouTube influencer kind of thing. I just draw pictures. Although I am getting a little bit better at, uh, oh yeah, thanks for the play. <laughs> I, I, I tried at least. <laughs> anyway, uh, bye. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah, uh, like I, I've known her since high school. It's like a long time ago. They're good people. Anyway, yeah, getting those jowls in here. 
it's kind of hard to do because like you've got a lot um a lot going on and if you just leave it kind of like grayed out like this like like some of this is still pretty rough i don't know how much i'm going to uh be able to get this stuff like super smoothed out and stuff i i don't mind keeping things a little bit sketchy but this is one of those areas that like you know it really does pay to spend some time on getting the values right and by values i mean like you know this area should be a little bit lighter than this area right just so that you can create that distinction between the two and even though i'm like not spending a lot of time here uh, developing like details and stuff like that it's still something that i want to make sure that i get those kind of things in so that it doesn't just look like one big old floppy mess Yeah, it's an awesome name, Curly Hair and Cartel. <laughs> Drug King run by Shirley Temple. Uh, you know, they, yeah, it, I'm trying to think. Yeah, they both have curly hair, so, yep. <laughs> I've always wanted a basset hound, too. For real. I have always wanted a basset hound. All right, so I'm going to come back to this area here after I've developed some of these other areas. Like, we're coming up on an hour. I want to make sure that I get all the major pieces in there, and then we can kind of, like, fix up some things. All right, so moving along, you got this ear over here. So you, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but, like, major thunderstorm going on. So hopefully the power statement, you know, it happens. Act of God, all that stuff. Can't change the weather. So there's like um like a little flap here on the ear i don't know what you would call this i would love to learn anatomy of animals because like i feel like i do make up a lot of these terms but got a bit of an ear flap here and then a little bit dark underneath and then you've got this ridge here that i'm going to softly pencil in because, again, I don't know how much detail I want to put into these uh, these other areas. And then this kind of comes down, like over here, kind of comes down and creates this, like, these ear folds. Nice to meet you, Curly. I think she left, Larry. <laughs> hey, because the can's in the room. Nice. I was gonna draw a uh, greyhound uh, instead of a basset hound, but um, I've done greyhounds a couple of times in the past. Uh, I have not done a basset hound yet. These guys are so cute. I may get, I may get around to doing a, a greyhound pretty soon. I know that Just Dave really loves greyhounds, so I know what you guys want, and uh, I like to uh, I like to draw those things. Like, I know the kid's really into the raccoons. Just Day is really into the greyhounds. Um, a couple of you guys like cats. Uh, Tom, if Tom's still in the room, he really likes cats. So, like, if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to play up to Tom for a night, I would, uh, I would draw a cat. Some of you guys just like any animals. Um. I don't, I'm trying to think. Some of you guys, um, I don't know, like, some of you guys like just pop culture things that I draw sometimes. Like, um, like I drew like a gremlin once and, um, I draw baby Grogu, like whenever I'm watching the Mandalorian. Um, I think I've done a couple of other pop culture things. I think that's, that's, that's something that people just generally like. I don't think any of you guys really like my portraits so much, but I do I do feel like I need to uh, practice doing portraits and stuff just because, like, that's important for me as an artist to grow. So I'm going to continue doing those, but sometimes you guys like those. But I, I know that that's not, like, the favorites of what you guys draw. Just just these little marks here and stuff like that gave, gave like, a lot of volume in here. That, that's cool. 
Oh, Parmesan roasted spuds. That sounds great. Yeah, Tom really loves the cats. Oh, cool, Kevin. Yeah, I, I really like the cabins in the room sometimes because he lives in my neck of woods. So, um, you know, when it comes to the weather and stuff like that, he would know what's going on. Like, I feel like Kevin would be nice enough to tell me if there's like a tornado warning. Because <laughs> I know that there were some of those earlier. Not tornado warnings, but there was a... Uh, some tornado watches. So I have to keep track of that kind of stuff. I love that shit. Like, just this. Ah, I love this dog. I want this dog. What's that, um, what's that music video by AHA? Uh, Take Me On. Um, I think that's the name of it. I don't know if that's the name of the song, but. I think that's the name of the song, where the uh, drawing comes to life and all that stuff. I want this drawing to come to life. And... This little guy just come and hang out with me. That would be cool. That would be so cool. Alright, so... Got a bit of a pull there. So somewhere right around here, there's another... There's all these neck rolls. <laughs> like... Um, Whenever you're drawing like a floppy dog like this, I love floppy dogs. Um, so not all flo dogs are floppy. Like you can, you can do some pretty streamlined dogs. Um, but these guys, these guys are super floppy, and it's so fun drawing all the different like floppy features. Like just this bulge here in the neck and stuff. It's so cute, and it, and it kind of like. Um, Kind of makes me jealous right so like yeah take on me that's it yeah oh such a good song um there's an acoustic version running around uh i, I want to say ac newman sings it i don't know but there's a couple of acoustic versions i love the acoustic versions of that song you know of course that that song's always been stuck in my head uh just because like you know the guy is drawing in it and stuff like that so i i uh i pay a little more attention to it then maybe some other videos or whatever, but anyway, I'm kind of jealous about like, you know, like dogs having like these roles and stuff like that. You can't have these as a human without people giving you grief, but for dogs, it's totally fine. And they're cute. Like I would love to be a dog is basically what I'm saying. If I, man, dogs haven't made, they have no idea how much they haven't made. Like these lazy assholes over here, they have no idea how good they've got it. Basically, they just get to lay around and eat and watch TV. Like, that's their entire life. Their their entire life is just looking cute. And they, they have no responsibilities. That's the whole song, like the Fred song. You guys got to look that up. The um... Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. That's cool. Um, yeah, so you guys have to look up uh, the Fred. Fred, he was a good dog. I gotta figure out what the name of that song is. I think I think it's Ray Stevens. Yeah, yeah, it's Fred the dog. <clears throat> All right, so what, once this is done, you guys need to Google uh, Ray Stevens, Fred, Fred the dog, um, and that's basically what I'm saying about how dogs have it so good. They don't have to do any of that. They don't have to like cook or clean or. They're basically like perpetual childs, like children. I, I think um, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true. This might just be like pseudoscience or whatever, but I heard that um, dogs are, uh, dogs have the, the brains of a five-year-old child, like five-year-old human child. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is true, I mean, one, that's cool, but also like, Cause that, that is actually pretty smart. Like five year old children are, are pretty smart, but also, um, they never grow out of it. Like they're, they're stuck. They're stuck at five years old. Right. So like, they're never going to grow up. They're just going to continue being with five year old little children. Like they're never going to get, they're never going to mow your lawn. They're never like, if you had an actual child, at some point, they're old enough to mow your lawn for you, right? So you get some sort of value out of having a kid. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> the, 
There's no utility in a dog. Like, you can't... The dog's not going to mow your lawn. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Davio says, I didn't want to pay for cable, so connected the entire complex. Everyone stayed quiet for a year. Free cable for 30 people. Nice. I remember doing that when I was younger. Jeremy, I suggest you refrain from touching your Solanas for the next few months. Oh, man. I used to own a lot of Solana. And um, when that whole, um, what was it, FTX? or When that whole scandal happened and all the uh, Solana lost its uh, value, I, I sold it off. And I sold it off too early because it, it, it bounced back. I, I wish I had kept it. But now I haven't had any Solana for a while now. And again, I, I, I think I mentioned this before. I only bought the Solana because I thought I might do something with it as a developer. Because it's, it's like the, it's, um, I don't know if this is true or not, but the, it's advertised or at least marketed as the, uh, the less expensive um, Ethereum. So it's good for like smart contracts and stuff. Um, but the, uh, the fees are a lot cheaper. So like the gas fees and stuff like that. Anyway, that was a promise. That's why I bought into it. Um, I never got around to doing any development with it, but that was what I wanted to do. I never really had a solid idea of something to build on the back of a, like a digital currency anyway, or smart contracts or anything like that. Like to me, I, I, I still don't understand what the different, like I get the whole like, uh, decentralized nation, uh, nature of the authority of the data. I get that. But also it's like, well, you know, it's not a big deal if I use like it's just a regular database instead of like a block coin le uh, ledger. Blockchain ledger, sorry. So are you saying like... Um, are you saying I should buy some Solana? Is that what you're saying, Hater? Or are you saying stay away from it for a while? Cause uh I don't know. Oh I'll buy I'll buy some stuff based on the advice of random people on the internet. Why not? This guy. He is looking he's looking pretty cool. I like Fred. Fred Fred's looking really nice. I like this ear. Um, you know, like sometimes when you're doing like a human portrait and stuff, um, you really want to get the hair right or something like that because the hair frames the, uh, like the person or something like that. Um, I feel like with dogs, especially big floppy ear dogs, it's, it's the, uh, it's the ears. Gotta get the ears right. You want to be a horse or a dolphin? What kind of dog would you be? Oh, that's a great question. Everybody should uh, answer this one. What kind of dog would you be? I'd like to think that I'd be like a lab because labs are like super friendly and stuff, but I don't think I would be. I'd have to, I'd have to think about that. I would definitely be a mutt. I would, <laughs> I definitely would not be a purebred dog. Um, I, w I wouldn't want to be a purebred dog. Um, purebred dogs are like, uh, I don't know. They, they have the, uh, they have the biggest issues. Like they even have like some of the major health issues and well, I don't know, maybe it's just purebred dogs that I know, but they seem to have more health issues. They seem to have more neurosis, um, neurosi. I don't know what the plural of neuroses is. Neuro maybe it is neuroses. I don't know. They have mental issues. <laughs> They have brain problems. Um, anyway, purebred dogs just seem like they're um, they're like a lot to uh, to handle. Versus a good mutt, I would be a I would definitely be a mutt. I'd be an awesome mutt. I don't know what kind of mutt. Um, I definitely would want some lab in me. In me, I like border collies. Border collies are super smart. I I think I would want some border collie in me. Like, I feel like I'm shopping now. 
<laughs> like I'm, I'm shopping for the perfect formula of a dog. I had Solanas, uh, yes, uh, uh, but I ended up getting rid of them quite some time ago. Um, so I don't currently have any. Now, but I am curious, are you recommending that I get some or should I like not for now? This guy looks cute. Oh, yeah, some husky. I would definitely want some husky. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like um this is like a really great question. Everybody should an be able to answer like what kind of dog they want to be, you know, or not. I don't know, unless you're like choosing purebred, which, you know, like it's your business. If, if you want to be a purebred dog, go for it. Um, but I feel like if you're not a purebred, you get to shop for like different qualities. It's almost like you're, you're, um, you're like a dog breeder and you're like picking which dog traits you want. I definitely wouldn't want a Chihuahua, right? Those like little yappy dogs. I, I don't want any yappy dogs. Like if I, um, I'm not a big fan of yappy dogs. I, I think they're cute. I mean, they, they do look cute and I, I would love to draw a yappy dog, but I'm not a yappy dog person. One of those um, little dogs that fit in like a purse or something like that. That's not me. I I, I like um, I like big dogs, but I also like uh, mid range dogs. I guess mid mid range. Big old box head and pick oh, a boxer. Boxer is a great dog. I would love to have definitely be a cocker spaniel. <laughs> I wouldn't want to piddle on the floor every time. Um, would anybody want to be a Dotson? Like one of those uh, like wiener dogs. Like I, I feel like I want I want to meet the person who would want to be a wiener dog. Because like that's a bold choice. I don't know what that says about you that you choose wiener dog. But I feel like if, you, if somebody chose a wiener dog. They're saying something about themselves. I don't I don't know exactly what. But they're saying something. Cause that, that's the statement I, I think, or even a Chihuahua, like even one of those little yapper dogs. Um, if, if you, uh, if you choose to be a yapper dog, you're saying something about yourself. Like if you, if you choose to be a, um, like a, uh, a, like a basset hound or, or something like that, I feel like you're playing it safe, you know, or if you feel like, um, if you feel like you're a, uh, I don't know, like a Labrador or something like that, you're, you're playing it safe. But if you choose like a, like a, a Chihuahua, that's a bold choice. That that's a real bold choice. Or um, I'm trying to think, what are some of the other bold choices? I don't know. I'd have to give that some serious thought to be honest btc is back at 65k and is going through a correction phase uh and it's a last dip so um you think it's going to stay up there i love how they call it correction phase this um basically like it goes up in value and then people like take their money out they take their winnings out essentially Uh, my dad's been super proud of um, having SHIB because SHIB uh, did like a big, um, uh, I don't know how far up it went, but it, it went up pretty substantially recently and he was all happy that he had some um, some SHIB. And then uh, I guess it took a bit of a correction. I mean, it hasn't like dropped substantially, but it's dropped a little bit. So I think that's the basic dog there. Now the uh, I think I need to kind of clean up some areas, make some uh, emphasize some other areas, um, and uh, kind of clean things up a little bit. It feels a little sketchy at this point, so we'll see how that part goes. 
Chow Chows. Oh, those are adorable dogs. The big fluffy guys. Oh. Um, I had... Now, Chows, they have, like, aggressive personalities. I don't know if I would like to be a Chow uh, They're super adorable, but they definitely are... I don't want to say they're mean dogs. I don't want to categorize them all as, like, being one way or the other. But I had a, um, a Chow mix... And, um, she really loved me, but she hated everybody else, right? So, like, if the neighbor showed up or, um, you know, mailman or something like that, she hated those people. But she really loved me. So, I think the parts that hated everybody was the chow. Chows are, are um, uh, they seem super aggressive to me. I don't know. But I'm not, like, a big dog expert, so I don't, I don't want to, like, characterize them in a particular way when it's not true if i was a dog i'd be a mongrel there we go i'd be i'd be a like one of those dogs that are just out on the street like a tramp dog like um that dog from lady and the tramp that would be me Yeah, I would definitely be like a homeless dog. I'd just be running the streets. That'd be great. Like, I feel like, I feel like when you ask yourself, like, what kind of dog I, you would want to be and stuff, you start, you're basically like fantasizing about what kind of life you want to live. Because, like, I instantly went to, um, you know, like Lady and the Tramp Dog, where you're just running around, you know, all the different restaurants that's going to give you dog bones and, you know, all your friends and stuff, they're all, like, just living out there on the streets with you and everything. I felt like that's, like, kind of fantasizing about, like, what kind of lifestyle you want to live. More so than what kind of dog breed you want to be. So, in, in case you uh, didn't notice, I'm really emphasizing some of the uh, the white in some of these areas now that I have the basic dog in here. Like there are parts that really stand out in his uh in his mustache and beard and so on and um you know you really have to press down hard to get it to be this bright on black paper uh but you know it, it's worth it it really makes certain parts stand out. Thirty thousand BTC move from a dormant wallet to Coinbase this evening. Uh oh, that might be. Usually, when something moves into like a um a place like Coinbase, that's so that somebody can dump it. So that sounds concerning. Based on my limited understanding of how uh Bitcoin or, you know, digital currency works, is like when they move to a um an exchange. That usually means that there somebody's going to dump that coin. It's moved to an exchange so that they can cash out, essentially. Which means, if that's like, I mean, that sounds like a lot. That's one of those things that might affect the pricing. Because one of the things that you're concerned about is like, is, is if the whales come in and like, they just dump all their coin on you or something. It really is kind of, it feels gamish. It really does. I mean, there's money to be made there and stuff like that, but it's also like, well, it's also a big old scam. This guy's looking cute. Get some highlights up here. Uh, oh, your niece was attacked by a child when she was a little one. Yeah, I really feel like those are aggressive dogs. Like, um, I, they're so cute. I, if they're not aggressive dogs, I don't really want to cast this, cast like aspersions or whatever that term is. Um, but my understanding is that they are aggressive dogs. Like, I wouldn't want them around kids. Um, you know, like dogs like pit bulls and and so on. They they get like a bad rap. Um, I feel like chows are kind of like in that same sort of, you know, 
general kind of um, breathe sort of. I don't know. Same same genre, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. They're not like so. Some dogs are just super friendly, and I think that that's part of their breeding, right? So like a Labrador, for example, or whatever these mutts are back here, whatever they have in them, they they're super friendly. Like even um, so, Bear likes to bark at all the neighbors and and um the mailman and and all that stuff so like she barks a lot but it's it's out of fear like she she'll run she'll she'll bark at whatever is outside but then she'll run up the stairs and hide if somebody actually knocked on the door or rang the doorbell or something like that so all of her barking and stuff it's it's just out of fear and i feel like a lot of animals are like that Like, a lot of dogs. I don't know how much of that is breeds, but. I feel like, I feel like I need a, um, a veterinarian to, like, co-host these, uh, these drawing sessions. Especially, like, when I'm working on, uh, dog pictures and stuff like that. So that they can speak to the, uh. The technical side of the uh, animals and so on. Because I, I really don't know. So I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I, I just switched to a black pencil because I feel like I kind of overworked some of these areas and I kind of want to like um, use the black to correct it a little bit. In the past, I've used uh, pens for this kind of stuff, but I don't like how that looks. The, uh, the pens I've got kind of don't look right on the black paper. But coming back with a uh, a black pencil kind of allows you to almost do like an eraser. It's not quite an eraser, but it kind of serves the same purpose. You can kind of downplay some of these uh, these marks that you made in white, which I feel like I went a little bit overboard. I feel like this should be a little bit darker. You know, it's supposed to be a black nose. Only, only the highlights and stuff get white. But I think that's a little bit better. I'll have to go back and check um, the footage to see if I like it better this way or the other way. But I like it. All right, back to the white. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing, we're doing good. Yeah, I like this guy. Um, I wanted to do something simple after those eggs I did the other day. I feel like those eggs were a failure. Like I really tried. I thought that um, I thought that would go better, but I really should practice before I go on air um, when I do these experiments and so on. Like I feel like I would have learned pretty quick that I should have used like acrylic paint instead of watercolor for those uh, eggs. I think they turned out okay, but I wasn't completely happy with them. I feel like I could have done better. So it's nice to just do a drawing after uh, a failure. <laughs> I don't know if I should call them failures, but. Um, Non-optimal. Uh, can't call them a success. Non-optimal. Experience, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Smartest dog you ever had was a chow. He came up to me during a uh, hail bop. Oh, so I called him. Um, wow, hey, hey, uh, hail, hail bop, hail bop. Uh, the um, the comet back in the day, back in uh, that was the uh, 90s, right. That's when they came through. I don't know if it's been through since then, but that was that uh, famous uh, Heaven's Gate cult. They all thought that there was a UFO behind one of those, uh, behind that comet. Just drawing in some whiskers here. Whiskers are hard. 
because you, you kind of want to do like a fine line and um, less is more when it comes to these whiskers. It's definitely a challenge for me every time because like, I, I don't know, like, well, those actually look pretty good. <laughs> like that was, I was about to apologize. Like, sorry, I screwed up the whiskers, but those actually turned out all right. Whiskers are hard um, when you're when you're drawing pets. Uh, there's different tips and techniques for uh, getting whiskers right. Um, one that I really like is where somebody comes in and like they kind of press into the paper and um, you know when when you're drawing in color pencils, you can press into the paper and kind of leave like a little track that when you color over it, it doesn't color in that part. But that doesn't really work for these uh these white pencil drawings. Like that works more like if you're using um you know like regular color pencils or graphite pencils or something like that it's it's very difficult when you're doing like with white pencil because you're basically having to draw the actual whisker and you can screw that up easy bye mama q have a good one uh oh the dog's think we're done. <laughs> we're not done yet, guys. Go lay down. Yeah, I'm really looking to forward to the eclipse next week. Um, got those uh, Maker of Mark bottles going up for auction. I think that starts... I think that actually starts on the 5th, but that may not be until the 11th. But... Um, I get to go to like an artist reception for those Maker Mark bottles on the 11th. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Where you get to meet the other artists, take pictures, things like that. I haven't seen any of my... Um, oh, I'm digging it. All over here. Um, I haven't seen any pictures of my bottles online yet. Or else I'd share them. Um, my dad's I've, I've seen in some of the promo uh, material. I think I just dropped mine off on a day where they were kind of like busy and I don't know it kind of concerns me that I haven't seen any like on Facebook or anything like that any pictures of mine but you know there's a hundred bottles so I'm sure mine is still there somewhere they haven't dropped them or broke them or anything like that I would like to see them at some point before they go up for auction I hope they find a nice home. You know, they're like little children. Oh, fish tacos. Oh, then the Ghostbuster movie. Oh, you guys going to go see the new Ghostbuster movie or like one of the older ones? Because I haven't seen the new one. I want to see it. I just like Paul Rudd. I like him in anything he does. So this is like some adjustments with this black pencil. I, I think this black pencil actually works really well on this paper. It doesn't change the color of the paper at all. So it's pretty good. All right, let's see. I like something here. I mean, at this point, it's basically just choosing little areas to highlight which is, you know, where you get your details and stuff. You do kind of like simplify things a little bit from the um, reference photo. Like you can't put in every single hair. You can't put in every single detail. You have to, um, you have to simplify it a little bit, kind of reduce a little bit. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you've been involved in computing for a long time as a developer. You shouldn't label cryptocurrencies as a scam. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, uh, it's got utility to it. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's a scam. There are people who are scammers who are involved in cryptocurrency. That is, that is a true statement. Um, you yeah, have missed a lot of uh, comments on that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Like, it, it is tough to uh, read all the comments and stuff. I try to... 
I try to follow along with what you guys are talking about and provide commentary and stuff, but I, I can't read every single one of them. I do apologize about that. I try. I, I try really hard. But no, um, to your overall point, um, the actual the actual technology is not a scam. Okay. So like blockchain is a is actually a valuable technology. I I uh I, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of its benefits, um, why it's um what it has over other technologies. Like if you're just taking data and you're trying to preserve the data, you can do that without blockchain. Um you don't need blockchain for that. In fact, this is probably like where um you know, when I talk to other developers and stuff like that who aren't big fans of uh, blockchain, uh, where they come down on it, and they're like, you know, what does blockchain have that that a simple um, database doesn't, right? So, like, you can preserve data in a database, um, or you can preserve data on a blockchain. So, what is the benefit of actual blockchain over a database? That's a that's a great question, Jeremy. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> this is rhetorical. Um, the benefit of a blockchain is is not in the the data is there. It's in the checks and balances of how that data is um, is is verified, right? So, blockchain is an open ledger where um, you have like either proof of um, proof of work or proof of stake. There's two different ways of. Uh, uh, validating the data on the blockchain, but it's non-corruptible. And, and the way it's designed is it's designed in a way so that um, there is no centralized authority. So like if I have a database of say a dog registry um, and I'm like registering, um, you know, like an AKC registry of dogs or something like that. And I'm basically registering all these dogs pedigree, right? If I have that database and I'm controlling that database, I am the I am the authority on whether or not that data is correct. Okay. Like if I go in there and I change some data, like on poor Fred here, and I say that Fred is not a Basset Hound, Fred is actually a German Shepherd, you guys have to accept that because I am the authority that's running that database. Um Versus blockchain, where it's a decentralized authority. So, like the benefit there is that the the data is not. You can't change poor Fred here. He's always going to be a basset hound. I can't go in and modify that and say that he's a German Shepherd. It's just in the blockchain. It's distributed across the entire blockchain, and all of the validators along the blockchain are verifying that Fred is actually a basset hound. So that is the benefit of blockchain. Is a decentralized authority of that data. Um, and from that standpoint, from that technical standpoint, it is a, it, it there's a lot of value in blockchain. Um, it's great. It, it is, um, it is probably the way that governments should be run as far as our data goes, uh, medical records, you know, all of these important things that you do want to make sure that they are, you know, correct the the currency side of it though the currency side of it is open to you know it is open to scammers it really is because like there is nothing stopping somebody from going in and like pumping up a uh an altcoin uh getting a lot of uh you know people to uh to buy into that altcoin and then just dumping it pump and dump um no different than in stocks, but in crypto, you know, it's a lot easier to do. And, uh, you know, from that standpoint, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a scam. That That is probably the wrong term, but it is, uh, it is one of those things that uh, there are issues that uh, people need to solve. I don't, I don't know how people are going to solve those. That That's above my pay grade, <laughs> but it is something that people need to resolve. It's such a beautiful dog. Anyway, it's a it's a complicated thing. I'm not even sure if I'm like explaining it well, but it is. Uh, I mean, it's the future, though. Like, it ain't going anywhere. Uh, that's why people probably should invest in cryptocurrency. Um, it is not going away. You know, there was a 
there's a time period when people were talking about, oh, it's a fad, um, Bitcoin's never going to be it last, and, and and things like that. That that's obviously not correct. That this stuff is is here to stay. Um, you know, when the government gets involved and they want to regulate it, that's how you know it's it's got staying power because that is what they want to do now. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes of it. The money in question rightfully belongs to you and should be under your ownership. I like the way you said that. Yeah, um, that's another. Um, that's another aspect of it. So, like, um, you know, people are distrustful of uh, fiat currency. You know, um, you. Your dollar is supposed to be backed by gold. Uh, there's a big question of whether or not that actually is the case. So these are these are things that I feel like um, are going to be worked out in the coming years. In the meantime, for some reason. Whenever I buy cryptocurrency, it goes in the toilet. <laughs> like, if you want to know what cryptocurrency to buy, just ask me what I bought and then buy anything else because whatever I bought isn't what's going under. So I kind of have a um, kind of have a love hate relationship with those cryptocurrencies and the technology in general. I'm fascinated by the technology. Like honestly, I do think that there is some. Um, there is some technical benefit to some of these things that aren't solved by uh, existing technologies before cryptocurrency came around. I do like this guy. This guy is looking super cute. I like that he's like look he's got such a great expression he's like looking off um into the uh where whatever is over here <laughs> thank you mj yeah i really wish i could follow along these uh conversations a little bit better what i need is a co-host somebody to be reading the uh comments and um you know, telling me what you guys are talking about and calling my attention to things. Because, like, I don't know, sometimes I, I get lost in the picture itself. I mean, I'm here for the conversation, mostly, because I could be drawing these pictures on my own. But also, I, I, I am kind of like, I'm a sucker for the art, you know? So, like, sometimes I, uh, I just kind of get lost in my own pictures. To be honest with you, like, this is such a strange phenomenon. It, it surprises me that these pictures come out of my hand. Like, I know that sounds weird. It sounds, it sounds weird to say, but like, I look at these pictures sometimes and I'm, I'm surprised that I drew them or like, I look at pictures that other people drew and I'm like surprised that they came out of a pencil on a paper, like while I'm watching, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do get kind of caught up in the uh, in the art. That guy's looking good. So usually I I pull out my uh, gel pen and I um I add highlights and stuff. I don't know if I really need to do that here because some of these things turned out pretty well without it. So like I can add a little bit of white. These um these places the lights catching it and it does seem like it's improving a little bit but it's almost unnecessary it's, it's not that big of a deal but let me try to get some white one of the things that i didn't like about doing those easter egg uh drawings is <laughs> nothing i was doing was working the way i thought it would like i thought i could come in with the uh white gel pen and like clean up some of that stuff on in the um on those Easter eggs and it just didn't work. And I thought I could come in with like a marker 
and uh, or like a pen and add some details and stuff. That was not working either. As far as like painting on eggs, I would definitely say don't do watercolor. Maybe gouache, but probably you should look at like acrylics or, or something like that. I do kind of want to like do a redemption round where I revisit the idea of painting on eggs because I do kind of like the, I like the idea of the delicateness of the, uh, of the egg and, you know, doing delicate artwork on top of it. That sounds awesome. That's the whole reason why I wanted to do watercolor in the first place. It just didn't translate very well. I don't know. As far as an experiment goes, it was fun, but I, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> Crypto isn't everyone's cuppa. That is so true. But it, it's cool, though, you know? Thanks, from Dog. Yeah, you know, like, I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating here. You guys give me the props and stuff. Really, it's just, it's a cute dog, you know? You guys give me, like, a lot of credit and stuff when it's really the fact that it's just a cute dog that I'm drawing. It's kind of hard to make the cute dog ugly. Yeah, this uh, this gel pen is definitely making things a little bit brighter through here, so that's cool. Um, I it's been a while since I've done one of these pictures, but I forgot like the gel pen really goes. There's only so much brightness that you can get out of a uh, a Prismacolor pencil because it's semi -o semi opaque, which means like it's still a little bit transparent. So you gotta like super press hard in order to get it to be like even a little bit whitest, but you're not gonna get the same kind of whiteness that you're getting out of this gel pen. And it is nice to come in here and add these like little highlights that just kind of stick out like this little highlight on the nose. Just little touch ups here and there, you know. I think these things really really emphasize certain parts. And then I like to kind of blur it by stabbing it with my... Yeah, that's cool. Man, this is like super realistic eyes. Oops. Gotta go a little carried away there. Oh, you release your niece's uh, Easter drawing. I must have missed that one. I, um, I didn't go to my niece's party like I wanted to for Easter. Um, but I did go for a walk in this park. And it's kind of funny. Um, I went for a walk on Easter day. And um, I'm walking through this park and I'm like, I started noticing these Easter eggs. They were just like laying out there and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like somebody did an Easter egg hunt out here. And I was thinking like, oh man, maybe they forgot that these Easter eggs were like left out here. And I, I saw like 10 of them and I almost ruined somebody's Easter uh, egg hunt because I was going to go back and I was going to pick them up um, just out of curiosity and everything. But it turns out like when I turned the corner, I saw that there was this lady out there with like these little kids and stuff like that. So um, and they all had like baskets. So I, uh, I, apparently she had hidden those Easter eggs just a little while before. And, um, and, uh, like right before I had, like come walking through. So if I had, if I had like basically picked up those Easter eggs, they would have been like stealing those Easter eggs. So I'm glad I didn't, but anyway. Um, this gel pen's really super bright. I like that. All right. What else can I do here? I think I can, um, we don't have time. Got a little bit of time. I'm 
not everyone can take that cute picture from your imagination, from their imagination, and put it into paper as easily as you make it appear while carrying on a uh, one-sided conversation with a bunch of text bots. <laughs> it would be amazing if you guys were all text bot, uh, tech, text bots. That would be awesome. I would love that. Like to just find out, like I was having a conversation with a bunch of bots. Proficient knowledge and strategic decision in making the field of DeFi um, has the potential to transform an individual with limited experience into a millionaire. That is a true story. Um, that is actually the promise. And, um, you know, like kind of the risk of um, just crypto in general. Because the promise is there, right? Like, but, but you know, there, but there's been promises like that in the past. So, you know, I'm old enough to have lived through the, uh, you know, the dot com bubble. Um, and there's been several others. Um, you know, currently we're also in the AI bubble. So the the question is like, how much of it is hype, and how much of it is like really true? Um. To deliver on the promise so like for example crypto is is great right but like also crypto um you know in some ways um is is technology that has other options you know the the big thing about crypto uh, like the big selling point to DeFi is literally the decentralization side of it right um so it's decentralized finance but you know the question is does finance really want to be decentralized or does it want a centralized authority hey I, these are questions i don't i don't have answers to um you know does finance like having you know a centralized authority i i have no idea or does it want to be free? Does it want to be unregulated? Does it want to be decentralized? Does it want to be, you know, uh, uncorruptible? I don't know. Time will tell. So this is what this is what I mean by like, um, you know, how much of it is true and how much of it is hype. It's the same thing with the uh, artificial intelligence. We're in this artificial intelligence bubble, bubble right now where it's like, you know, yeah, artificial intelligence is going to make millionaires out of people um, out there. But how much of it is, um, how much of it is reliable and, and how much of it is just like, you know, the bubble, the hype? I don't know. I don't know. Like, um, Yes, I uh, I have spent a lot of time in uh, software development and stuff, but it still confuses me. Some of these technologies, you should definitely not take my advice on anything related to technology. I don't think you should take my advice on anything related to art. <laughs> sometimes I can make a decent picture. Sometimes it's it's a struggle. But these are fun things to talk about. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, having conversations like these. It's it's definitely interesting, and um, you know, takes an otherwise boring day and makes it interesting. Uh, I I you know I say this all the time, but I I really truly um, feel this way. So like I appreciate you guys being in here because you guys do, you guys are the highlight of my week. Um. Left to my own devices, I, I, I could live a pretty boring life, you know, in solitude, wrapped in my my own head. But you guys make it, um, you guys make it fun. You guys uh, make it an enjoyable conversation. I think, I think this guy looks like a basset hound. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we're coming up at uh, on the two hour mark pretty soon. So I think just like a little few, few little details here and stuff, and we'll probably call it a day. Get a little bit of brightness here in this 
That's very really busy error. But yeah, this guy is definitely Fred. Um, before I go, I'm gonna have to link to that uh, to that song by Ray Stevens because like that song's just stuck in my head right now. I I wish I could play it, um, but I'll probably get like a copyright strike or something like that. But I'll link to it when uh, when I'm done here for you guys to check out. But that that's the song that's stuck in my head right now. Your accent sucks. So it's very Cockney. I would love to hear your accent. I, I need to have like a, a phone in type thing where you guys can call in and we can chat while we're uh, while I'm drawing. That'd be awesome. I probably so I've gotten better at following like uh, English accents because um, I like I, I do watch a, like a lot of British shows. But if, if it's a straight up Cockney accent, I don't know. Like I might have some trouble with that. I have trouble with like really thick Irish accents as well. But I do like I, I do watch a, a lot of British shows like, you know, one of my all time favorite shows is still uh, Sherlock. Um, I love Doctor Who. There's a couple of other like IT crowd. I love that show. I, I wish they would make more of the IT crowd. But I feel like those aren't very thick accents. So like I, I, I feel like those are easier to follow than Maybe some of the others. Although, I, you know, when I first started watching those shows, I had trouble following. Um, it's so weird. It's, it's to you guys, it's not even an accent. It's, it's just, a, you know, you're having a conversation or something like that. But, um, you know, when I first started watching British shows, it was hard to follow. But I got better at it. I, I felt like it would be the same if somebody was, like, watching... Um, I don't know, somebody with uh, really thick southern U U.S. accents. It would probably be hard to follow at first, and then you'd get used to it. But I love accents now. I, I really do. It it's so funny because it's, it's all the English language, and it just sounds so different in different parts of the world. Um, the... Uh, uh ida who shows up every now and then she's from new zealand and uh it's really cool to like hear a new zealand accent and then like i don't know just everybody's accents like different even though it's the same language it's so weird like probably i have an accent of some sort but um you know it doesn't sound that way to me Or I wouldn't think of myself as having an accent. Maybe like a Midwestern accent. <laughs> Most of my family's from the South, but I don't feel like I have a Southern accent. I can fake a Southern accent. Like I I can um I can definitely do that having been around Southern people so much. But I don't feel like I have a Southern accent myself. Looks authentic, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Hey Miss and Andy, I don't know what you're talking about. Um Copyright strike. Oh yeah, if I played the uh, the Fred song, I, I probably would get a copyright strike. So that's where um, YouTube like actively like monitors your channel and make sure that you don't you don't play something that's copyright and righted by somebody else. It's so weird. It's so it's such a draconian type such is like system. It, it's just ridiculous. But it is the way it is, you know, like I, I'd have to uh, have like the right to play the song. Makes sense, you know. Hound dogs have amazing eyes. Yeah, this guy's so cute. My uh, hound winks at me even uh, using some. I feel like this dog, you know, like if I just put in more curls or something, this dog could look like a uh, Cocker Spaniel, maybe. Um, I don't know. Who would want me to be a co-host for Jeremy's next stream? I'd have to figure out the, how to make that work. Like, um, I feel like I would have to uh, set up an account with StreamYard and then maybe do like a, um, like a call-in type thing. Th that would be kind of cool. I, it, it's definitely something in the cards. Like, uh, I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but like, I, I definitely want to do that. 
uh, I would love to get other artists and stuff to uh, come on my stream as well. I would love to, <laughs> like, this would be fun. If I could get other artists to come in and talk shit about my art, that would be great. Like, I would love to get other artists who are, like, established and, like, really good at what they do to come in and say, oh, Jeremy, this looks terrible. This dog is, like, the worst dog ever. That would be awesome because I'm, I'm like, a glutton for uh, punishment. Like, like a masochist when it comes to art. I would love for somebody to come in and just roast my art. That would be great. Like how? Wait, where do I find somebody to roast my art? That's that's who I want to co-host. That'd be great. But no, I think that would that's in the cards. That would be awesome. Like, um, I don't know if it'd, it'd be next stream, uh, hater, but definitely in the future. Uh, at some point, I'll I'll set up like a streamyard account and uh, invite some people on. Because I think that'd be kind of cool, you know. Like, it'd be easier to, like, talk to somebody directly rather than um, try to read the chat and see what the conversations are and so, so on. I think this, like, guy looks pretty good. Um, so we are at the two-hour mark, so I probably am going to call this done. I don't know if there's any touch-ups I might do to it. But um, I think it looks pretty good. Hey, quit making noises, weirdo. I kind of like this guy. All right. So um, let me look up Fred real quick uh, so that you guys can let's see if this is. Drinking warm water before bed balances blood sugar levels. All right. So I think this is it. Uh, it's it's tough when I'm doing live streaming whether or not I want to link to something because I haven't had a chance to check it out. But I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to say I think this is um uh, I think this is that song by Ray Stevens. Let me see. All right, if that's not it, I do apologize. Like if I link to the wrong thing, but anyway, it's a it's a great song. This this is what reminds me of um of that song uh, by Ray Stevens. Like again, I grew up with it. Uh, my parents used to listen to Ray Stevens all the time. Uh, it's a funny song. It's about this dog that used to like cook and clean and stuff, but now he like he's like getting getting into like no good and and everything. But anyway, um, so I I guess I'll go ahead and leave it with that. Uh, finish off my drink, take a look at this picture, see if there's anything that I want to change real quick. Um, I think it, it looks like the original um, reference picture. I could probably do some more development down here. I'm pretty, pretty happy with most of this, but it's kind of hard to tell what part is ear and what part isn't. So I think if I had to, um, you know, fix up some things, it would probably be like it would probably be in this general area but i think it looks good enough i'm happy with it um great conversation with you guys uh, i appreciate it as always uh hater bringing in the technical conversation with the crypto um i think you know we talked about like a lot of things tonight um let's see so yeah the uh the eclipse is next week but i'll be able to see you guys before then uh i'll definitely be back on thursday let's see go ahead and go back to this all right so yeah so uh i think that's a good stopping point um i appreciate you guys hanging out with me this is awesome make sure you check out that uh ray stevens uh fred <laughs> he was a good dog um but uh yeah this is uh fred the basset hound let me go back to it real quick um i think it looks pretty good it, look, it, it, it definitely looks like a nice little hound dog I'm pretty happy with this one. This one was a good one. All right. Good conversation. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Tuesday night. Um, I'll go ahead and let you guys go because I know some of you guys have to go to work and school tomorrow. Um, but I'll be back on uh, uh, Thursday. Come here, Guinness. You look like a hound dog. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday. Don't know what we're working on, but it's going to be awesome, as always. Uh, until then, 
Catch you guys later. Bye. Have a good one.